Hey, I wanted to make a little video about uh, using a PID on a Gaja espresso machine. Um, a lot of people think of it as just a magic bullet and you're going to get perfect temperature every time. Uh, you still have, really with any espresso machine, you have a routine you have to follow uh, in order to get a consistent temperature from shot to shot. And uh, the Gaja with a PID is no exception. You're still going to have to follow a certain routine or you'll get varying temperatures. Now, uh, I've added, I've got a few different things going on here. This thermometer has the sensor right down here on the group head. So that's telling me how warm the group head is. And uh, it's in Fahrenheit. I could change it to... Uh, Celsius there. Okay, so it's at 96, which is pretty hot. I My target temperature for espresso is usually around 92 or 93 C. Um, over here, this is the PID, and that's showing the boiler temperatures at 105. That's where I've got it set. Now, uh, I fired this machine up early this morning and uh, pulled a really great tasting espresso. I tested a bit with the with the thermometer and made sure the temperature was where I wanted it and it was great and I've left the machine on so this has been on for quite a while just sitting um, and the temperature is quite high. Now there's two schools of thought. You could set your PID so you just walk up to it and pull a shot without doing anything and get the right temperature. And if you, if that's your routine, you could pull one shot at the right temperature. You'd want to set the PID temperature much lower than I have it set. But then you couldn't pull a second shot. You'd have to wait 15 minutes or more before it would deliver the same temperature again. And then you could walk up and pull a second shot 15 minutes later. If that's the way you wanted to deal with it, you could find the perfect temperature. You'd need to measure it, but you could find the perfect temperature for your PID to do that. Um, I prefer to set the PID high enough that I do a cooling flush first, and then I wait a set amount of time, and I get the perfect temperature every time. So uh, right now I've got it set at 105, and... Uh, I set up a little different thermometer. Usually I use a, a thermal filter I made, but this is just a styrofoam cup that I cut down. Uh, it's in a smaller porta filter I had from a cheaper espresso machine. And um, it's just the right diameter for this cup is why I used it. And it's reading in this thermometer right there. Um, and the reason for this is I figure a lot of you aren't going to have a thermal filter. They're complicated to use. <clears throat> you need to have a really fast reading. This is a fast you know, that's just the wire bead in there you see in the center. Just bare exposed. And that'll help it read faster. Now, if I just walk up and pull some hot water in here, you're going to see down here that it's way too hot. It'll probably be, I'm guessing, um, well, that's reading in Fahrenheit down there. I'm guessing it's going to read about 205 degrees Fahrenheit. I tend to think in Fahrenheit in brew temperature, even though I've got this set so I'm betting you're going to see hotter than 205 hitting this. Now the minute the air hits, the minute the water hits the air, it's going to start cooling really fast, especially if it's above boiling. It has to cool the minute it hits the air because water can't be above the boiling point when it's not pressurized. It can be hotter than boiling while it's in the boiler because it's under pressure. But the minute it comes out, it can blast to steam. It's still below the boiling point, but uh, it's going to, you know, it's pretty close. But I'm betting you're going to see 205 degrees over here. I have to work around the camera without hitting it. So that's been idling with that. So I'm going to set this under there to keep the air off the uh, filter screen. And you see it got up to about 206. Now, <clears throat> so the routine I've been using is to pull a shot, like I just did, pull a flushing shot, 
and that cools the group head down. And then I start a timer. for two minutes. Now you, you may have whatever routine you want, but that two minutes gives me time to prepare, you know, grind my coffee and uh, prepare my filter basket and get it ready. So, um, I had to get my timers <laughs> ready to go. Uh, let me pull another little temperature we get. And that got up to about 199. This thermometer is really helpful for me because it's telling me as the boiler heats up and the hot water is down here, it's telling me the temperature of the group head. And when you start your pump, the water is going through that group head, and if the group head's a lot cooler than the water in your boiler, it will pull that heat out of the water and cool the water down as it's going through. And if it happened to be hotter than what was in the boiler, it would heat the water up as it was going through. It acts a little bit... The Godra boiler is unique. It's it's not like not like a big commercial boiler. It's It only holds about uh, three ounces, three, four ounces of water. Just not very much at all. And uh, and the heater, the boiler itself is the heater. And there's not a heater sitting in the water. The boiler, the case of the boiler is the heater. It's embedded in the aluminum. So the outside of the boiler gets really hot. And that's what this is measuring, the outside of the boiler. Um, And I forgot to start my timer. I don't know if two, I don't think two minutes has passed, but I see that's up around 195. Pull it up. And that's about the temp I would want. This time I'm going to start my timer. So I just started a two-minute timer. And I may pause this video and we'll take it up in two minutes. But you see the PID takes a little time to recover. That's because when you turn on the pump, it's pumping cold water into the boiler. Uh, it brought the group head temperature down. That was the cold water being pumped into the boiler and the group head is bolted directly on the bottom of the boiler so that cold water cools it down too. Now the PID is showing the outside temperature that's showing the outside of the boiler, the skin temperature of the boiler if you will and the water inside is absorbing that heat from the shell of the boiler and that's why the PID is flashing, it has to keep adding a little heat. It's turning the heater on every time it flashes red and applying a little bit of heat as the water absorbs it. And as the water absorbs it, it's warming up the group head down here because the group head is sitting at the bottom of the boiler with all that hot water on top of it. So that's pulling heat out of the, out of the water. The top half of the boiler is heating the water the hot water is getting warmer and warmer and warmer and heating up the bottom of the group head. That's how that works. And as you see, it's coming up to 195 here. Um, I found I could watch that thermometer and choose. I can use that as my surf. Uh, when I, it works really well for me is to see that hit 196 and then I start my shot and I get you know, right around 200 degrees Fahrenheit hitting the coffee. But my timer hasn't gone off yet. So, in this video, instead of... There, my timer just went off. That timer actually matched.
Now, I like to keep this locked in just to uh, hold that heat on the group head. Now I started my timer again. So this is my routine. And you can't use my temperatures on your machine and expect to get the same results. Um, this particular boiler, it's the way I mounted the, the temperature probe. I mounted it uh, with heat sink compound. I, you know, a little screw hole in the side of the boiler where the old mechanical switch, temperature switch used to go. I filled that with heat sink compound and poked the exposed tip, the little bead. I use an exposed bead. I don't use the metal sheath that you, you usually get that in, you know, embedded inside some brass or copper. But I mounted the bare sensor bead right in the heat sink compound. That's how I mounted it. So my machine has a brass block in the uh, above the filter screen, the shower screen. So mine's going to behave differently than than yours probably, but with my routine here, I have to wait two minutes between shots, and I find I can get pretty consistent uh, temperature that way. And alternatively, I could probably set my PID down to around 102 or 101 and just come back in 20 minutes and just pull the shot without doing any kind of cooling flush. But I prefer to do the little cooling flush and wait for the alarm two minutes. It didn't quite hit 196. Let me shut off that alarm. And with this setup, I'm not sure that we're reading the exact temperature that's hitting the coffee. It's pretty close. But the main thing I'm trying to show is that I can reproduce it. I can get consistent results by following a routine. You know, I set up my routine and I'm getting the same numbers in that little styrofoam cup every time. So uh, you'll have to find your own routine that works for you. But uh, anyway, that's just a thought. That's the way I like to approach it, and I hope it's helpful for some of you.